let's start by looking at uh, data partitioning so first of all before we get into data partitioning I just want to introduce a little bit of uh, some concepts about subsetting uh, with vectors subsetting vectors or data frames with other vectors so here first we create a vector of uh, 10 elements with uh, you know the values 1 to 10 multiplied by 2 so I say c1 colon 10 times 2 so c1 colon 10 gives us a vector in fact 1 colon 10 itself gives us a vector uh, so c1 colon 10 times 2 gives us the values 2 4 6 8 uh, so on the even numbers up to 20 now let's say that we create another vector which contains only the odd numbers between 1 and 10 so I use the sequence function to do that okay so I say uh, sequence 1 the starting value ending value and the step 1 comma 10 by 2 and therefore I get the 1 3 5 7 and 9 okay so now why has the values it's a vector with the values 1 3 5 7 9 I can use that to subset the vector X so if I say X of Y okay if I say uh, X of Y so I'm going to get from X only the elements which are in positions 1 3 5 7 and 9 okay so I get 2 6 10 14 and 18 okay so whatever are the values in the vector Y they become the values that we are selecting from X okay uh, so now we introduce another important concept here which is that uh, if you've got the vector Y uh, here we saw how in the previous slide we saw how we can select from X only those indexes which are in Y we got that now we can always use minus to say get me everything other than these values right so in here what we're going to get is we're going to get all the elements from X which are in positions other than 1 3 5 7 and 9 okay so the minus says get me everything else okay so armed with these ideas uh, by the way we can also use a boolean vector for retrieval so here I'm creating a boolean vector of uh, okay so I'm creating a boolean vector of the values sorry I'm creating a boolean vector with the values you know true false false true false etc and this is a vector with 10 elements so uh, X was our earlier vector with the values 2 4 6 8 10 up to 20 so now if I pass Z which contains the boolean values if I pass Z as the index if I say X of Z then it's going to get me back only those elements of X which correspond to the true positions in Z okay false elements are ignored all the trues are selected so therefore you get the values 2 8 10, 12 and 18 which corresponds to the first position the fourth position sixth position and the ninth position okay so those are the values those are the positions that have true and therefore you get only these elements and of course like before you can do minus and you'll get the other elements okay so uh, this is just a repeat okay so now using these ideas let's see how we can create a training partition and a validation partition so we read the auto mpg and then we say t.idx which is just uh, you know the return value we use the sample function and to that we say we give a vector which is 1 colon n row auto n row auto is the number of rows in the auto data frame let's say it has 500 rows so this is just the numbers 1 to 500 and then we are saying from this array randomly select 0.7 times the n row auto that many elements okay uh, which is that we want to create a training partition with 70 percent of the rows okay so 0.7 times n row auto sample that many elements randomly from the range of numbers 1 to 500 okay so this is just a range of indexes so this random sample of 70 percent of the rows we get not the rows 70 percent of the indexes we keep it in this variable called t dot idx after that if you print t dot idx you'll just see the the row numbers 
that were randomly selected. The 70% of the row numbers that were randomly selected. Okay, so now we can use that vector as an index into the training partition. Okay, so we can say train is auto of t dot idx comma. We say comma and leave it blank because we want all the columns. So train now will contain only those rows in auto which correspond to these indexes. And then we can of course do the validation partition as everything else auto of minus t dot idx. After this you can check the number of elements in n row, uh, the number of elements in training and validation. That was the the long approach. The short way of doing the same thing is to use the code from my book, the package Hodar, and then that has a function called partition2, and the partition2 function does everything we saw in the previous slide. So you don't have to write all that code. You can just say Hodar.partition2 auto. By default, it creates a 70-30 split. Okay. So after you do this, if you do that dollar training, you'll get the rows in the training partition and that dollar validation gives us the rows in the validation partition. Now incidentally in the book uh, there is a, a hands-on activity on creating partitions and you'll see all of this there as well so you could take a look in the book. Okay. Um, now if you want a non-default partition the, by default it creates 70-30 if you just pass the data frame. If you want to explicitly specify how many rows you want in the training partition you can pass that as a second argument unfortunately this is a mistake I should have actually written here uh, n row and I should have said times 0 0.8 Okay, I should have said n row times 0 0.8 because I am supposed to specify the number of rows and not just the proportion here. So that's a mistake. But other than that, if you do this, you will get a training partition with 0.8 and a validation partition with 20% uh, of, the, of the rows. Okay, now let's take a look at the preferred approach to do data partitioning. Uh, and that is using the caret package. So you say install.packages caret, load the package by saying library caret. And then here is where you create the actual indexes of the selected row. So you say t.idx is create data partition. That's the function in uh, uh, in caret. And then you specify what is your variable of interest. Okay, the reason being that when we create the partition, we want this variable of interest to be uniformly represented in the partitions created. Okay, in other words, the values are distributed in a certain range you want that same range to be reflected in uh, both the training and the validation partitions in sort of equal proportions. Okay, So that's what you, you specify the, the target variable for and then you say what size of training partition you want. In this case you just specify the proportion and we say list equals false because by default it returns a list. The create data partition function returns a list but what we would like is a vector. So we say list equals false and we get back a vector. Okay. Now, uh, in any case, in either case, whether if your target variable is numeric or if your target variable is categorical or a factor, you pass that value here. For example, suppose our target variable is a factor. Let's say buyer a non-buyer. Okay. So now you want the training partition and the validation partition to have a good representation of buyers and non-buyers. Okay. So what the create data partition will do is to distribute the values of buyers and non-buyers properly among the partitions depending on the size of the partition. right? So for example if there are 100 buyers in the overall data file you'll see that 70% of them stay in the training partition and the remaining three will go, 30 will go to the validation partition. That is why we pass this and therefore this function create data partition creates much more representative samples than the previous random sampling approach. So I would say this is the preferred approach even though the book doesn't talk about this approach at all. The book talks only about the, uh, you know, about the Hodar package and the partition 2 function from there. Okay, so once you've got the t.idx, the indexes of the elements in the training partition, you can always say auto t.idx comma to get the actual training partition and then auto minus t.idx 
to get the validation partition. So that completes our discussion of data partitioning with R and we'll just use this approach as we go.